Bear markets are challenging even for the most successful investors. There's no two bear markets that are the same. And as a result, investors really struggle with what to do in their portfolios. And so today we're gonna to talk about the top TSP mistakes that we see federal employees make during bear markets. But before we jump into things, if you've not met me, my name is Tiago Glieger. I'm part of a group of financial planners that are helping federal employees make better financial decisions. This year has been really tough in the markets. We've talked to a lot of federal employees who are really struggling in what to do with their TSP, what to do with the rest of their portfolio. So we wanted to share with you some of the biggest mistakes that we've seen people do throughout the course of this year. Whether people have forgotten to rebalance or they've been paralyzed by the amount of decisions they have to make surrounding that, if you fail to do this in an appropriate manner, you could be causing yourself quite some trouble. If you're coming close to retirement, your portfolio is going to have to start providing you with the income that you need in order for you to meet your living expenses. For you to have that retirement money, you have to set up your portfolio in a manner that it's creating the cash and sending it to your bank. Now, if you're still generating an income in any kind of way, maybe you're working part-time or you've separated from service and now you're doing something else, then your need for the portfolio to provide all of your income is less. But the challenge is if you're already retired or you're planning on separating from service and not generating an income, this is really important. Your need for lower volatility investments as well as cash goes up. Your ability to create sustainable cash flow, and the key word is sustainable, during a bear market and during volatile markets goes down. This is because the market's volatility creates unpredictability in the short term in the markets. So if you need cash within the next 12 months or so, what is the likelihood that by the time you need that cash, the markets will have fallen? Well, because we're in a bear market, volatility is more prevalent. So that means that six to 12 months from now, if you need cash, what's the likelihood of that portfolio being a reduced value? It's higher because the markets are currently more volatile than they normally are. So what does this mean? This means you have to plan your cash requirements well ahead of time, somewhere between 12 to 16 months if you're no longer generating an income. Now there is one exception, and that is if you have taxable accounts. So these are individual accounts, joint accounts, trust accounts, things of that nature. If you have one of those types of accounts, you have the ability to create rebalancing schedules that are strategic so that you're creating tax savings for yourself. So because of this, the timing of your portfolio rebalances really matters. And so you may want to delay creating cash here and there, of course, depending on what your goal is, if your goal is generate cash as well as provide some tax savings. The second big mistake we've seen federal employees make during this bear market is that they've been too conservative. Now this might sound counterintuitive and the cognitive dissonance with this point is significant. Yes, it's true that you wanna preserve your assets as the markets are falling. But if we look at a bear market, how long do they typically last? Are you gonna be using all of your money during that bear market? So earlier in this year, right around January, two weeks into the year, we've started preparing our clients for a bear market this year. We weren't certain if it was gonna happen this year because no one can be certain, but we had a pretty strong conviction that we were gonna have very volatile markets this year regardless. As a result, we published a 10 facts you need to know about bear markets article and video. We're gonna put the link somewhere either on the screen or in the description below. You've got to check that out. Anyway, the reason I bring that up is that in that piece, we looked at what is the historical time frame and how long does a bear market average? And the answer is not quite as long as you might think. Around nine to 10 months is the average period of time that a bear market continues. Some are shorter, others are longer, but there's one thing in common with all of them. They all eventually end. And so because of this, there are parts of your portfolio that have to be invested for the years beyond the bear markets. You're likely gonna need parts of your portfolio 10 years from now. The volatility you experience between now and those 10 years is gonna be much less relevant to you than the volatility that you're experiencing between now and the end of the year. 
That's because over time, you have the ability to allow markets to recover, and that creates more flexibility in your investment plan. I know it's really difficult, but try to compartmentalize your money into different piles of money. Each one has a little bit different of a job. There are some that are tasked with creating your short-term cash needs. There are others that are more intermediate, others that are longer, others that are well beyond your retirement, and some for late life. And while it's difficult to do this, having a strategic investment plan really helps to accomplish this. It takes away that decision making that you're forced to make while things are falling apart, which is much more difficult to do. When markets are very volatile, your gut response takes over as opposed to your rational decision making. Peter Lynch of Fidelity once said, far more money has been lost by investors trying to anticipate corrections than lost in corrections themselves. So before we get to the rest of the video, can you do me a favor? If you've liked some of this content so far, if you found this helpful, will you hit the like button and the subscribe button? That tells us that this is the kind of stuff that you guys wanna hear about and allows us to go out and present more videos for you. To no one's surprise, transfers to the G Fund are the highest they've been for a very long time. Federal employees are struggling to watch their portfolio values drop, so by moving their investments from more aggressive ones to more conservative ones, like the G Fund, it helps to protect some of that principle. But this kind of transfer is actually a double-edged sword. While it helps prevent some more decline, it also precludes you from participating in the opportunity of regrowth once the markets return again. And if you're making these transfers after your portfolio has fallen, you might be making these losses permanent. A couple of weeks ago, we put together a video that talked about how to avoid the G Fund trap. At the end of this video, there's gonna be a pop-up that comes up that lets you click that video. If you've not watched it, you have to see that one this year. So this next mistake ties very closely to the first one. We talked about how critical it is to know what your expenses are gonna be ahead of time, but it's also important for you to determine and plan out how you're gonna get access to that money. A lot of you already know this, but if you submit a withdrawal form to the TSP, your account will pull proportionally from all of the funds that are invested within. Now, we just talked about how you want to generate cash ahead of time so that if the markets are falling, you're not selling investments when they're down. So if you've been thinking about using the G Fund as your cash bucket, Think again, the distribution request in the TSP is going to cause it to sell across the other investments that are more aggressive. And if the markets have fallen since then, you're gonna make those losses permanent. If possible, consider pulling money from places that don't have this kind of limitation. So just be careful that you don't have too much cash on hand because if too great of your portfolio is within cash, then you're running the risk of your portfolio not growing fast enough to be able to support your lifestyle needs for the rest of your life. There's countless research about how families with a formalized plan are much more successful than ones without one. Whether you're creating this plan yourself or you're working with professionals, you need a plan. If you can have a plan surrounding your decision points you need to make in the future, you're much more likely to make rational and good decisions about those choices. For example, we've talked to our clients about what the strategy needs to be in the event of a bear market. You need to have something in place as well. If markets decline by 20%, what are you going to do? How are you going to rebalance? How are you going to meet your income needs? Those are things that need to be planned well in advance. And if you're struggling to find the time to do this yourself, consider putting a team of advisors in your corner so that they can help you make the best decisions for you and your family. If you want our help, we're opening up slots again for federal employee families to work with our team. We'll put our website in the description below. You can go on there and send us a message directly from our website if you're interested in learning about what we do. And finally, make sure you're putting your questions, comments, concerns, anything you want to talk about in the comment section below. We love to see the engagement that you guys are having on some of these. By doing this, you're helping other people learn more, and you're also making our channel more popular, which helps us get in front of more federal employees like you.